Hello, hello there, and welcome back to Warframe Aboard the Type 59. And this Chinese 8.0 battle rating medium slash main battle tank is pretty cool to look at. And I got this camouflage from my favorite pay to win marketplace. And I tossed a few Gaijin coins to my favorite bias company. And so I think this is really a oh, valley of uh, plenty. So I just infected you with an earworm. And so here we go. And I just can't help myself, both with memes and bad jokes, as well as hyper aggression. If you look at the minimap, I'm just going forwards and I want to get this cap. The rest of my team is going directly for the enemies. Spawn is just spawning in and is also flanking hyper wide. Nobody's really going for me um, or with me for the capture zone, and so I slow down a little bit. I hear an enemy tank, and oh, that 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 is unfortunate. Both the fact that I just killed that Orville 74 before he could get gun on me, but also that he now provided the perfect cover for me with that smoke because. I don't have any source of smoke in the Type 59. No smoke shell, no smoke grenade launches, no engine exhaust, smoke system, whatever. And so now I can park behind this conveniently placed panther rack. English is difficult today. And as well as just my aim and just capture the point in peace. But now I just uh, drive back my uber aggression <coughs> as a German and go to fight the matter and that is camping but I'm still a German so I do some frontline camping and so I'm now uh, switching from hyper aggression into the patient mode let the enemy come to me now I got the advantage they have to push the spawn they have to push the cap more precisely and now at this point my team is arriving so I know that there is a BMP1 of some description, so it must be the German Premium, no, the German Tech 3 light tank. And so I wanna now play some mind games with him and just turn around so he thinks that I'm coming sideways on. But he actually has some situational awareness or he just simply looked through the buildings and I mark him for the rest of my team. Some shots are coming in, he gets blinded by some 20 millimeters, I guess. He whiffs a shot and sadly that shot didn't really connect the way that I wanted so my heavy machine gun is now deleting the gunner and allows the MX-50 Sibling D to finish him off. That's quite an expensive tank in the marketplace so he needs every tank kill that he can get his hands on especially at this battle rating in this matter with all the stabilizers, AP, FSDS, heat FS, etc. And so he has to make his shots count. And now I'm pushing with my team and you can see there is somebody to the left, somebody to the right, somebody next behind me. We have some support and we're now pincering the entire enemy team. And the enemy team also tried to go directly for our spawn. Look at this, look at this. They are even marked directly on the minimap because they entered the red zone. So a mouse just deleted the MX-50 Sibling D, which is quite unfortunate to have uh, lost just my backup is something where I just patiently now wait for the enemy to come to me. And I'm just listening, right? The Roika just finished off the mouse, which is nice. And then uh, I have to say this is pretty beautiful. But watch this shot. Oh, it's, it's just so good, you know. That's the advantage of having a stabilizer versus having none. Now, what you have uh, seen here is uh, positioning, patience, but also the tank's performance. I'm using here as the standard shell the AP HEBC round from a 100mm type 59 gun. And this is just all that it wants. Oh, that makes for a perfect thumbnail, doesn't it? Moving on. The downside of this tank in overall performance is not the speed um, or the yeah, horsepower to ton ratio. It is just under 15 horsepower per ton and that's not excellent but it's good enough especially if you have this uh, Soviet suspension magic and also the ground uh, resistance or ground pressure if you will. That is fairly okay with those rather wide tracks. It is the tra traverse speed. Only 10 degrees per second. That is quite limiting. A lot of the tanks at around this battle rating have 20 to 30 and with only having 10 that is quite problematic. I see the aircraft coming in and I just don't want to be a sitting duck. 
I just want to be a moving duck because um, then I have a chance of not get quacked that quickly. What? You're here for the bad jokes? So I heard an enemy tank, just saw it uh, coming around the corner and then with uh, Gaijin's magic sound design I heard him through the houses but I very often cannot hear tanks that are right next to me. So thumbs up for Gaijin's sound design. Oh well, have those two planes just collided in mid-air? I guess so, that was on purpose because they are from the same clan. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for some enemy tank acrobatics. Looking around the corner, I see a Leopard 1. And yes, I always pronounce it the German way, because why not? Because the English pronunciation of Leopard would be Leopard, and that sounds more like a German disease. Lepra. And while I agree that those tanks fall apart just like you when having this disease, I just want to pronounce it the German way. And he just got pincered by me and the boys and just a shot through the lower plate or a little bit the side, I'm not quite sure. And we got yet another kill. Nice. So, and this is, if you look now at the minimap, the enemy team having overcommitted and we just uh, went for the objective. We had a little bit of luck just getting it and then we just calmly pushed our team through the enemy team. Oh, what a beautiful sight, that moving burning R3T20. I love this camouflage. What do you mean that's not a camouflage? <laughs> so yeah, now we actually have the objective, we have the map control, so the only thing left is the enemy's spawn. That's just how War Thunder works. I would love it to be a bit different, I would love to see bigger maps with bigger teams, with more objectives, with more things to do, more RP and civil lines to earn. I don't know, take out the bunker line, take out some AIs, but I think that this is not really fitting the meta. And then we have it, if that Leopard would have had a stabilizer, he could have punished me for my lack of situational awareness. But anyways, somebody is now unsubscribing because I just killed him and he has no humor, lol, well, just like this plane. And well, what do you mean with that I have 24,000 kills to go? Oh well, doesn't really matter. So here I'm repairing, I'm down to two crew, but I'm still alive and just look at this beautiful steel rat decal and look at this chat. Oh, what, what, what an absolute hero that Amex. 10 RC just stopped nearby, helped me repair, and while it saved me just some seconds, which was not vital for the outcome of the game, it absolutely increased the feel good feeling of this match. That was one of the reasons why I showed you this gameplay, right? So, the amount of kills that we got, not amazing, but the way that we got them was actually alright, I guess. And also, that chat just you know, helping us repair. Thumbs up for you, boy. At the end of the day, I think the way that I play this tank is not that much different from a T44-100. I don't really try to rely on my armor. I still load the APA GPC rounds because they are tr more trustworthy. And, uh, you know, while the stabilizer is nice to have and the heat FS as well, I think, you know, to not get hit, but finishing off enemies with side shots is the way to go in this tank. So as well as the yeah, missed kill here on that Coelium, I also think that the lineup with the WZ-305 is also pretty cool. There are more tanks that you can use in this lineup like the M113A1 tow and also the SBD-86 as a backup light tank if you will. Um, you know that's all nice and dandy but at the end of the day I always try to go for the perfect evil match and there we have it 66,000 civil lines and 6,660 modification research points and just under 6,000 vehicle research points survivor heavy metal hero what a nice result i absolutely love it i really think that this tank is not you know too good for its battle rating but it's certainly very nice the combination of heat fs stabilizer and uh, the three different APHE shell types together with uh APDS and even APCR, if you're really a masochist, is nice. It gets hold back a little bit by the turret traverse. But at the end of the day, I think that the tank really looks cool with this camouflage. I only can recommend this to pick up for just a few Gaijin toys um, to be tossed at your favorite bias company. is really worth it. And so I had a really relaxed approach to this tank. And again, thanks for Gaijin. 
uh, thanks to Gaichen for the test drive, so that was really nice. That's it for me today. Thanks for watching, as usual, and thanks for listening. Please give this video a like if you did, subscribe if you want to see more, and as usual, we'll see each other on the waves, in the skies, and on the battlefields of War Thunder.